Right then, you join me yet again in the land of the midnight 40 watt bulb and today I'm going to talk to you about sockets. Now, with regards to your sockets as a DIYer, what you'll require in a modern world is dependent on the vehicles that you want to work on essentially. So, as someone who has not only used these tools but sold them to the end user as well, I get a rough, well I say a rough, I get a pretty good idea of what tends to be commonplace on certain vehicles and what doesn't. So basically, I'm going to talk you through it a bit today, try and give you a bit of a better understanding of what you're going to need depending on what you're tackling as a DIYer. So when we think of sockets, we think of these traditionally. We think of your quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, shallow deep, usually from about six mil up to about 36 mil, uh, which covers your vast majority of light duty applications, cars and small vans and stuff. Um, Typically, most of your sets will come with um, a 3 8 because it, it encompasses the most sizes. So my 3 8 there on these two middle rows, these actually cover from um, 6 all the way up to 19, which tends to be what you get until you start going to really big stuff like subframe mounts and uh, things like that. So by and large, you can do most of the job on most cars with that with those sizes um it is important to have the shallows and the deeps because there's nothing worse than when you get um a nut that's just got a tiny bit too much stud poking out for you to get on the nut with your shallows and that is extremely galling and it's happened to me on multiple occasions which is why i now keep them both and i've always been a big believer that it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it so that's why i try and keep as much as I can so I'm self-sufficient I'm not having to stop the job and run to Machine Mart or Halfords to buy a new set which happens in hell of a lot for people <laughs> trust me I used to work at Machine Mart and I had one bloke come back to me five times in one day needing parts to do his I think it was an Alfa Romeo yeah so I'd always advise getting a really good set that doesn't have any skips in it so like this set here is, hasn't got any skips from I think I think, I think I took the 6 out because I never use it. So I think that's 7 to 19 and there's every size in there. So I don't tend to run into any, any problems thinking, oh shit, I haven't got a 16, I ain't got an 18. Which you, you do get 18s on, on, on your VAG stuff, especially your old stuff like um, Mark Three shock absorbers, Mark Three Golf shock absorbers. They've got 18 mils on them and it's a, you never find that on Japanese cars. To be honest with you, on a Japanese car, you can normally go away 8, 10, 12, 14, 17, 19 and maybe a 24. Um, that's all, all you ever need normally. Oh, and a 21. Um, but, yeah, especially on your on some of your European stuff, you find that these sort of what I'd refer to as the in-betweeny sizes start to come into their own. Um, also, it's important to make sure that you don't have any problems with access. So I don't have any chrome half-inch deeps, as you can see, because my impact grade sockets, which are for my impact gun, as you can see, are, are very shallow wall. So these aren't much bigger. In fact, they're no bigger than a normal chrome half inch deep which means that i don't need to have two sets and i've only got a small toolbox as i'm sure you saw in the last tour at least at home anyway so that's my one of my space economizing tactics now where you'll start going into weird stuff normally if you're working on japanese stuff that should be everything you'll ever need where you start to get into weird stuff is when you start moving on to your european vehicles for sure at least from my experience anyway so on here you've got a selection of torques allens and splines and some external torques as well which are basically like these but the female version of them um, so you'll find especially on the vags that these are very very commonplace in fact you can normally get and i've got one in my car um, like a flip open case that's got all the short and long bits and a couple of drivers for putting in a half inch and a three eight square they're worth having, but I, I like this style because I like these vulcanized ones. For me, they, they seem to be a bit stronger when you're really cracking them because, honestly, um, torques and allen keys and splines are not famed for their strength. The the, the tools or the bolts, they're, they, you know, they're very, very susceptible to getting ringed inside and stuff, as is the case with any, any female really fastener, unfortunately. But you just got to be careful with them, um, really. As you you want to clean them out when you're trying to you know like clean them with some penetrant wire brush and then tr i find a good tactic these is to tap them in a bit before you start cranking on that way you're square inside and you ain't got too much to worry about but these are really important on your on your vag cars 
definitely your torqued allen splines also you'll find that this this also is these are used a lot on mercedes and bmw as well bmw started to use they use a lot they've always used torques but they started to use splines a little bit now from what i've seen as well and um your e-torques these are extremely common on your mercedes and also on your Vauxhall. surprisingly because obviously Vauxhall's opal it's german um so you get these a hell of a lot on the Vauxhalls. in fact I think pretty much every single bolt on like a vector or something is, is actually an e-torx. So these are really, really important um, to get hold of. So as you can see, basically, it's just a female relief of the torx. They're not, they're not into size. So, for example, that's not an E60, even though that's a T60. So they don't, they're not interchangeable, if that makes sense. Um, and the other thing that you might need is something like this. Now, these here are multi-fit sockets so these have got like a splined design in them and they will fit anything with corners essentially so if you have something that's like a square maybe or a 12 point nut these will get it off you can also get 12 point versions of these i don't have any other than this one because on a lot of the volkswagen stuff your drive shaft nut is a 36 12 point so they, you have to have that, but this is a 12 point, this is a 6 point. I like the 6 points better because they grip the flats of the bolt rather than the corners and the flats are stronger. But if you've got a 12 point and you can't get it out, this these will normally save you bacon. So these are really important to have, I find. I mean, and also if you're going somewhere, if you go into like the scrapyard, let's say, and you don't have any idea what you're going to encounter, a set like this is normally really good because it will encompass everything you need. So I would strongly recommend a set of those. They're actually, um, they're, those are Clark Pro ones from Machine Mart. I've got two sets of these. I've got a set here and I've got a set at home as well. Um, other things that are quite commonplace is your spark plug sockets. And this is what these two massive things are here. This is a really big one. This is a an M14 plug thread, I think, or some, something like that. And um, these have got, I don't know if you can see it, but these have got a rubber insert inside of them and that's for gripping the spark plug when it comes out because spark plugs you know a lot of them have to come out vertically and there's no worse than dropping them in dropping them into chamber trust me um and this is your common size here this is the one that i use on pretty much all the spark plug jobs i've ever done uh, but these are really important to have obviously if you're working on diesels you're never going to touch your spark plug but if you want to get plugs out, you need something like this. So these are these are really important. There's other specialty sockets you can get, like sockets for removing oxygen sensors, sockets for removing track rods, sockets for removing uh, oil sending units. There's a lot of specialty sockets, but unless you're doing that one specific job, like your spark plugs are a part of your servicing. Your oxygen sensors, usually, you don't... They're kind of thing that... You only you won't replace them periodically. You only replace them when they need replacing. So I find that um, I mean, if you've got to do the job, it's well recommended to get one because there's no getting a 22 mil spanner over all 22 mil. There's no getting a 22 mil spanner over them, and there's no um, getting a 22 mil socket over them either because the wire's in the way. And normally the plug is too big for you to slip the 22 mil ring end round, and you'll never get them out with an open end unless you're very, very, very lucky. Um, because obviously they go through so many heat cycles, they almost weld themselves in there can be a nightmare um but my take off from this is if you're only working on your japanese stuff other than these you don't need to bother with this lot really really other than maybe the allens if you're pouring in like any fancy dress bolts or something like that or you may be doing um you know if you're maybe pulling apart like the dashboard or something you may get one or two of these but you'll not get many uh, but your torques and your splines, if it's old Japanese stuff, by and large, you'll never need them. Um, now, if you're working on your on your vags, realistically, you want these. You definitely want these, and you want these as well, uh, without a question. Especially stuff like this. So, a good example of this is that there, that 16 mil. That's for doing the six-speed O2 gearbox drain plugs. So they're all an M16 tamper-proof. Really important that you have that. The the multi fits are always are always I'd always recommend them because they're very very useful and also they also work as a bit of a you know if you've got something that's rounded if you've got that and a big hammer you normally sound the um, 
the e the e talks definitely important if you're doing Vauxhalls, Mercedes, anything like that. And this stuff here is just worth having if you're working on anything that's European, even your even your Citroens and your and you know your, your French stuff and your Italians, Fiats and things. A lot of them are torques and and not necessarily splines, but a lot of torques, definitely. They also sometimes use the ribe bits, which are a bit weird. They look a bit like a gear. They're like a torx, but with flatter edges. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, we're at a stage now where more and more manufacturers are putting in more and more weird, fast, weird fasteners to try and avoid, you know, try and try and make it difficult to work on the car, basically, so that you have to take it to dealer. It makes sense. Uh, Volkswagen, pretty much everything, every job of Volkswagen's got a special tool, like getting fuel pump out of a Passat and stuff like that. That's just got a special tool, and you know, um, so that's that's the unfortunate situation, which is that with a lot of cars these days, you, you're running just to keep up. Um, but if you're working on what I would refer to as the enthusiast cars, so stuff from like the '90s and the 2000s that are cheap enough for you to buy as a project now, if it's Japanese, buy that rail. If it's German, buy that rail as well. And always, always, always make sure you've got a really good set of half-inch impact sockets for the big stuff so you can put them on your strong bar. Because trust me, splitting a socket on a half-inch breaker bar and your knuckles meeting your control arm is not a pleasant experience and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you.